up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Lunch Table Sports Podcast. Draft week, NBA draft week is finally here. It should be an exciting couple of days. Um, we're going to try and pump out a couple more NBA draft videos um, as this draft day comes near us. But, Aiden, how are you feeling that uh, that draft week Draft week is here? Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting week for NBA fans, and uh, I'm excited to see what happens. I think there's going to be a lot of – a lot of parity for this for this draft like we're not we're not even totally sure who's going to be number one I think we have I think we I we both think that's going to be Jawari Smith but um I don't think um it's not a consensus number one this year which I, I think we haven't seen that in a long time so that's kind of cool and um I think starting from number one like the whole top 10 it's kind of up in the air so I'm excited to see where guys go yeah um me too without uh further ado Let's hop right in. So as you see here, number one on the big board is Jabari Smith. Um, Aiden just mentioned it. We both think he's the best player in the draft. Um, I mean, it's kind of a toss-up for that number one guy in the draft. Do you think it'll be Chet? Do you think it'll be Jabari? As you see here, um, ESPN and um, fansbo.com both have Jabari as the number two player in the draft and Chet number one. So it's kind of it's kind of a toss-up between a lot of guys. I personally think Jabari is the best player in the draft. Um I think he's got the most scoring upside out of any of, the, any of these top guys uh, in the draft. And the thing that really sells me is like to go along with his elite shooting and elite scoring potential. He's very good defensively. Like everybody is raving about Chet Holmgren's defense, which I, I would give Chet the, the edge on Jabari defensive wise, but Jabari Smith can defend really well. And that Auburn team, even in the tournament, um, they struggle in the tournament. I noticed Jabari was constantly on his teammates. Like, hey, this we always got an next play. Come on. So you're getting that team player for the Magic. And I really like the fit at the, at the power four position because Jonathan Isaac really hasn't been healthy all year. Um, and throughout his career, Mo Bamba has been playing some of that twin tower center power forward um, position with him, Wendell Carter. But I think getting your true uh, stretch four for the Magic and franchise piece, um, I, I think he's the number one player in the draft. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I think Jabari Smith has got a lot of upside. Um, he's an elite shooter, um, but I think uh, I'll just you you start talk about a lot of his strength. I can I can talk about a lot of his weak or, or not a lot, but some of his weaknesses. Um, I think he's uh, he's primarily a catch and shoot player. Um, I think if he works on uh, scoring off the dribble a little bit um, in the post stuff like that, I think that'll only help. Um, He's, an, he's a good defender. He's he's good. He can guard kind of that one through five. He's he's a very versatile defender. But I think um, he's an okay shot blocker. I think if he improves on that a little bit, um, that'll just make him even better. But that aside, um, I agree with everything you said. He's His upside is is way too much to pass up on. So um, I agree with that. Jabari at number one. Yeah. Um, my number two player in the draft, I got Chet Holmgren from Gonzaga. Um, as you see here, once again, ESPN and fans, about both their number one players in the draft, which like I said, it could be either or, but in my opinion, I put Chet at two just because some of, he has a little more risk um, factor than Jabari. I mean, he's seven foot and his weight's 195. I mean, he's definitely got to get that up if he wants to play at a high level like the NBA. Um, he's going to be going to elite strength programs for any NBA team he goes to. Um, but his defense is, is tremendous. I think he's got the most defensive upside out of anybody in this draft, um, and even a, a high defensive floor, his big risk is the offense. Do you think his offense will translate over? Do you think he can, you know, the jumper was kind of struggling for him at the early season, kind of find his groove in conference play, but in March Madness, it rose some question marks for some, for, for some scouts and for me included, but I think he can put that together in the NBA, um, just get a consistent, steady jumper. But um, the real magic is his defensive capabilities. Yeah, I agree with that totally. He's um, he's an elite shot blocker. I think that's one of his best traits. Um, he, he's very lengthy too, and he knows how to use it. Um, he's got a ridiculous wingspan, and he's got good shooting mechanics for for a seven footer. Um, and he's good. At, he's got guard like skills off the dribble. Um, I think all that together, he's he's got a lot of upside on um, on offense. But I just think, like you said, he's got to work on that frame. Um, less than 200 pounds of a seven footer is, is pretty skinny. So I think him, him getting a little bigger, stronger, um, that'll only help for him 
go up against guys that are that are men in the NBA who who he's not gonna be able to do much against if if that's his frame. Um, but yeah, I think that his defensive upside, his um, his guard, his guard like handle, he can, he can play off the dribble, um, he can shoot, all that stuff put together. I think he's gonna be a, a very good NBA player. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I got a little surprise here. I got uh, my third player in the draft is Jaden Ivey out of Purdue. You know, a lot of people are talking about this consensus top three. Oh, this top three in the draft is so great. And in my opinion, I think it's a consensus top four. Um, I think Jaden Ivey's uh, third above Paolo Bencaro. Jaden Ivey is so explosive off the dribble, off the cut. Um, he's an amazing score, as you see here, 17 points per game. Um, I, I, I like his defensive upside. You know, he's not going to be the greatest defender, um, but he definitely can defend. Um, some, some things that he has to prove upon are his shot making or his, uh, not his shot making, but kind of shot choice. Um, sometimes he's got to develop, develop more of a mid range game. But other than that, um, one of my big comps for him is a, is a plus size Donovan Mitchell. He's just so explosive throwing down dunks, crazy athletic. And you put that crazy athletic with good basketball player who knows how to score can play the point guard or the shooting guard in the NBA offers so much versatility in an NBA offense. Um, I just, I just like that as my number three player in the draft. I think uh, he'll be a better NBA player than Paulo. That's why I'm at three. Yeah. Um, I like that. I think Jay Navi is very underrated in this draft, even though we, we have him at three, but I think he gets overlooked with all these other guys. Um, he, just like you said, he's a freak athlete. Um, he blows by his defenders uh, with the ball. And he 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 pressures the rim. Um, I think he he's he's very um, aggressive when trying to score, which I like a lot. Um, he's clutch too. I think he's a guy that that likes the ball in his hands at the end of the game. Um, he he makes big plays. Um, some of his weaknesses, though, he's turnover prone. Um, I think he he tries to do too much sometimes with the ball. Um, his decision making is sometimes questionable, which I think in the NBA he'll be more of a two guard instead of having the ball in his hands all the time. And um, sometimes he, he's, he's kind of um, questionable on defense sometimes. I think if he improves on those, those things, he's going to be a great NBA player for sure. Yeah. Um, no surprises here at number four, though. I got Paolo Bencaro. Uh, Paolo Bencaro is still an excellent player. Um, probably one of, if not the most NBA-ready player in this draft. Um, I think he can come in and produce maybe right away, more so over Jabari or Holmgren. Not more long term, but I think right away um, it'll probably be Paolo. My only concerns for him that dropped him down from three to four was really his defensive um, upside. He's not an elite defender, and that's something you kind of want to see out of um, a big man in today's NBA. Um, he's 6'10, 250, which because of that defensive kind of, I wouldn't say he's a terrible defender, but he kind of struggles with it in college. You're not going to be able to play him at center a whole ton. So he's kind of that strict power four position. Um, but other than that, he's excellent at offense. Um, great, great rebounder on offense. Great. Uh, his shooting kind of came more as the season ended. But I see a lot of John Collins in his game. Um, big time power forward. Throws down dunks. I think he'll be a very good NBA player uh, for a long time to come. Yeah, I like Paulo a lot. Um, he's a polished scorer. So he said he, he's very NBA ready and he plays a pro style game. Um, he's good back to the basket, um, and he he he's a he's an okay three point shooter. But I think if he improves on that a little bit, um, he'll be very good. And he uh, he has guard skills too, so he he can handle the ball. He's a good passer, good playmaker, and um, yeah, I like Paulo a lot. But um, I I think I agree with you having him four here. Yeah, um, pick five. This might be a a reach for some people, but not for me. I got Benedict Matherin um, from Arizona. You know, a lot of people I've seen knocking his game um, as of late. They don't think he could be a, quite the scorer that he was in college in the NBA. That's like the opposite of me. I, I really like him because of how good he is on the offensive end. Um, defensive end, I definitely think he has some upside that people aren't talking about there. Um, he's a hustler. But on offense, he can shoot the lights out of the ball. Um, and he's crazy athletic. He's throwing down dunks. He had one of the most iconic dunks um, this past season in college basketball. So I think whoever's getting Benedict Matherin, is getting a all around score, a three level score on the court, which is so valuable um, with a shooting, playmaking. Uh, it says small forward here, but he can play. Uh, I could I could see him playing point guard in some in some sets, not every set. 
Uh, he can definitely handle the ball. He did that Arizona, but he's going to be more of your traditional wing. And I think I see a lot of shades of prime Victor Oladipo in Benedict Matherin's game. Um, so I'm really excited to see what he can do in the NBA. Yeah, I like I like him a lot. Um, I think he's he's very athletic, just like you said, and that's his biggest trait. Um, he's also very creative on the on the offensive end. He kind of gets boxed into a, a three and D type player, but I think he can be a lot more than that in the NBA coming off someone's bench. Um, I think some of his weaknesses, he's he's very creative on the on the offensive end, but I think that sometimes causes to uh, him doing too too much with the ball and um, turning the ball over. Um, he's got a good frame too, 6'6", 210, and being that athletic, I like him a lot. So I think he's a very pro ready player as well. So I like I like Mathurin a lot. Yeah, uh, my sixth player in the draft is Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray is one of the most interesting guys in this draft. Um, he's a late bloomer for sure. He really wasn't getting any college looks um, coming out of high school. He went to prep school for a year, and that's kind of where it, his, he exploded. All of his um, growing caught off to him. He shot off to 6'8 that year, and he went off. He got an offer from Iowa, which was the only D1 offer. He went there freshman year. He just kind of went higher than people expected him to. He averaged around eight points per game as a three-star recruit. You know, that's impressive for a freshman. Then for a sophomore, he just exploded. 24 points per game in the Big Ten is absolutely absurd. Um, people kind of find Keegan Murray a little boring, People don't find him as flashy as the other guys, which I just think is crazy um, because he's not. He averaged 24 points per game. He's one of the most caught um, NBA ready players out of anyone in this draft. He's for sure going to be a good NBA player. There's no doubt about that. There's really no limitations in his game. Um, I don't think his ceiling at is high as others in this draft, which is why he's not a top four um, player in this draft. But that, that high floor is um, definitely noticeable. And I think whoever drafts Keegan Murray is going to get uh, a long-time NBA player. Yeah, um, I like Keegan Murray a lot, too. I think he's very underrated. Um, he's one of the older players in this in this lottery. Um, he'll turn 21 shortly after the draft. But um, that, that aside, he's a smooth athlete. He, um, he He's not freaky athletic like some of these other guys, but he's a very good athlete, underrated athlete. And um, he, he's a knockdown shooter. He can make shots from basically anywhere. He's very polished offensively, um, and he's a good rebounder, too. He's an underrated rebounder, average nine, nine rebounds a game. Um, I think some of his weaknesses, though, he's, he was a occasionally a loud threat for Iowa. Um, he can catch lobs, but he's not, he's not an above-the-rim athlete. He's not explosive, really, above the rim. And I think he's kind of a tweener. Um, he's, he's, not, he's not really um, big enough or, or quick enough – or not uh, big enough – big enough to play kind of that um, – next to the rim in the paint kind of style, but he's not small enough or quick enough to play um, as a wing. So I think he's kind of a tweener like that. But I think if if he goes to the right team and a team finds a role for him, I think he's going to be a very good NBA player. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my seventh player is is the mystery of the draft. It's Shaden Sharp. Um, Shaden Sharp was originally going to be in the 2022 um, recruiting class. And last second, he kind of reclassified to that 2021 class and – decided to go to Kentucky. The plan was he was going to redshirt this year, kind of grow his game and develop, and then start next year for Kentucky. But scouts started to see um, in prior workouts, stuff like that, really how athletic he was and how good of a, of a shot maker he was. And so that really started to take notice. And w quickly word spread that, you know, he, he was this crazy athlete. And then, boom, he kind of blew up. You know, I, I remember reading a mock draft, and he they had him in the top 20. I was like, who is – like – I didn't know like Shane Sharp was getting this much hype. And then here he is at seven on my big board. Um, he's totally, you're banking on his, uh, his upside and his untapped potential because this is definitely a high risk, high reward pick for anybody who's getting him. Um, I think he struggles a little bit with his, um, not his shot making, but kind of his shot creation for himself, creating for himself, kind of struggle with that. I think he kind of needs others to create for him, which is kind of a red flag. Um, but I think he'll figure out in the league. And I think because because of how athletic he is, um, and if you put that scoring mix together, I think he if he goes to the right situation, he'd be st scary good in the NBA. Yeah, um, I agree with all that. I think he's he's kind of a mystery in this draft. Um, we'll see what team kind of takes a risk on him. 
Uh, I mean, just like you said, we haven't seen him play in a competitive uh, type game since he played in the EYBL. But um, he, just like you said, he's freaky athletic. Um, he's got a 49 inch vertical, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a very quick first step and he, he's physically and um, athletic, athletically ready for the NBA. And I think he's an underrated defender too. Um, I think a pro comparison for him would be an Andrew Wiggins, maybe a little more athletic, but kind of a younger Andrew Wiggins where he, he's not, he's not too good um, off the dribble and he's not, he's not a very good playmaker, but everything else he, he's very good at. It and he's, he exceeds at, at most, most things that um, NBA teams are looking for. Um, he's a good shot maker. Um, he's athletic. He's a good defender, everything you'd want in a, in a, in a guard. So I think if he goes to the right team, right situation, he's going to be very good. Yep. Um, my eighth player in the draft, I got Dyson Daniels here. He, he played, he was originally from Australia. Um, he signed with the G League Ignite team. So he's, he's been playing professionally for pretty much his whole career now. Um, and he's kind of been a late lottery guy up until his pre-draft process. And he kind of flew up boards. Um, he's an excellent defender. That's his best trait. Um, people kind of label him as a point guard. I think he can play a point guard, but I think in the NBA, you know, he can be more of your two guard who can also pass the ball, play make. Um, biggest knock on him is a shooting ability. He's not going to be your elite shooter, but I, I think that's okay. I think if he develops, you know, a steady jumper, I mean, nothing too special. I think he figured out in the, in the pros. Um, I really like kind of the Lonzo ball comp for Dyson Daniels. Um, you know, that excellent um, defender who also can uh, dish the rock out to all of his teammates. He elevates the play of all of his teammates. So he's kind of been a late riser um, up to this point, but I think for, for good reason. Yeah. Um, I think Dyson Daniels, I, I like him a lot. He's, so you said he's an elite defender. I think he's one of the best defenders in this draft um, with his length and on ball tenacity and stuff like that. Um, I think he can guard kind of one through three with his height too. So I think he's, he's a very versatile defender. He's not just, uh, can't just guard, um, guard guards. He, he can guard wing players as well, which I think is very important. Um, I think he said that we need to improve on his shooting. He made, he made less than 30% of his threes last year in the G league. And um, his free throw numbers, his free throw shooting numbers don't really impress as well. And um, he's kind of a tweener guard too. Is he, is he good enough? And is his, is his handle good enough to play point guard? And is he a good enough shooter to play shooting guard? We don't really know. And it's kind of, kind of big question marks around him. But other than that, he's a very good player. Yep. I pick nine. I got Jalen Duran, who is a center from Memphis. I'm a big, big time Jalen Duran fan in this draft. Um, he might be one of the top athletes in this whole entire draft, um, 6'10", 250, but he moves like he's 6'8", 200 pounds. He's flying around the court, sh um, blocking shots, um, throwing down nasty dunks. I think Jalen Duran could be your prime DeAndre Jordan type player. Um, I think that's a really good comp for uh, Jalen Duran, kind of lob city J uh, DeAndre Jordan. I see a ton of Duran's game. Um, he was a top-rated recruit out of high school, five-star recruit. So he's got that talent. Um, I think he's going to be one of those guys who's better in the NBA than he was in college. Um, I don't think he lived up to as high as expectations people had for him at Memphis, but he definitely turned it up as of late. And um, I'm just super excited to see where he goes in the draft and how that how that team uses him in the pros. Yeah, I like Jalen Dern a lot. I think um, a good comp for him, too, would be a guy like Robert Williams. Mm -hmm. who's a very good uh, rim defender. He's an explosive athlete above the rim. Um, and he can move very well for his size, just like you said. Um, besides, I think he's his offensive game is a little bit limited, though. He's, uh, he, he's kind of just a paint scorer, which I think if he can work on his shooting just even a little bit, who he can make, like, um, pick and pop shots, stuff like that. I think he's going to be that more, uh, that more dangerous. But um, I don't think that's that too big of a problem. I think that he's... He's going to be a player that's primarily in the paint and and setting screen and stuff like that, rolling the basket, which he, he can do at his size and, and quickness and his athleticism, stuff like that. So I like Jalen Durner a lot. A lot. I think he's he's getting um, overlooked in this draft a little bit by some guys. Yep. Uh, my 10th player in the draft here is A.J. Griffin, uh, small forward from Duke. Griffin's definitely one of the top shooters in this draft. Um, 
I don't think his stats totally show the story. I think he averaged around 10 or 11 points at Duke. I'm not completely sure. We kind of bust um, onto the scene a little later in the year. Um, I forgot who went down with injury on Duke, but I'm pretty sure someone went down with injury. Um, he stepped in and then boom, he just took that job and flew with it. He got hurt a little down the line, but it wasn't something too bad. He came back from March Madness, but he's one of the, he's the youngest player in this draft. Um, he's only 18 years old right now, but he will be 19 years old by the time the NBA season starts. Um, he's a, I wouldn't say the best defender um, in the world, but his offense kind of makes up for that. Great shot maker, um, three-level score. I think whoever's going to get him is going to be an excellent shooter. Um, he's going to be a very good role player in the NBA. Um, role player is in a starting role player, knows his role, knows, you know, knows he's a shooter, and I think he's going to be um, very good in the NBA. Yeah, I like A.J. Griffin a lot. I liked watching him play for Duke. Um, so like you said, he's an elite, elite shooter, probably one of the best shooters in this draft. Um, he made 50% of his three-pointers last year, which is crazy on, on a high mm -hmm. volume. Um, and he's physically mature, too. He, he has that NBA-type body already. Um, but I think he's a little inconsistent. Uh, we didn't see him totally um, busting out until kind of the last little bit of the year. Um, so I think if he can work on his consistency a little bit, um, try, to be, try to be that star player all the time, I think that'll help a lot, too. And he's got a lot of defensive potential, but just like you said, he was he was an average defender this year. But with his his frame, his size, stuff like that, I think he he can be a good defender. But I just think it's got to be all the time. So I like AJ Griffin a lot. Yep. Um, my eleventh guy in the draft year is you know a bit of a raw player, kind of flew up the boards as of late too. Is Jeremy Sohan from Baylor? Uh, he was the Big Twelve Sixth Man of the Year. Um, didn't start a game very similar. In, in some aspects to Scotty Barnes uh, from Florida State, not the player, but kind of the career path so far um, in college, a six man type who is getting looked at as a top guy in the NBA. Um, he's a tenacious uh, rebounder, excellent defender. Um, he's constantly moving his feet. I think there's one clip where I just loved in March Madness where a guy was shooting a free throw. I think it was against UNC and he was literally shaking. He couldn't set, um, couldn't sit still because he had so much energy and that's just the player he is high energy guy um, shot blocker uh, lob threat um, he doesn't have the best offensive game he really needs to develop kind of a jumper which he doesn't really have in his arsenal but I think that crazy defense and uh, great rebounding somebody's going to fall in love with him in this draft I wouldn't even be surprised if it was top 10. Yeah um, I, I like Sohan a lot I think just like you said he's one of the best defenders in this draft um, He's tenacious and he can guard kind of one through five. Um, he can guard anybody with his uh, with his size and quickness and athleticism. Um, I don't know. I think he's he's not as much of a polished scorer as some of these guys. Just so you say he doesn't really have a jumper in his, in his game right now. I think if he can work on that, um, he'll be very good in the NBA. He's um, he's not he's not as much of a. I don't know how to say this. Um, he doesn't – he lacks kind of scoring touch on the offensive end. Um, so he's kind of more of a defender. But I think if he can work on that 3 and D and kind of be that type of player in the NBA, he'll have a very important role on a team. So I think just just working on that offensive side because defensive side, he's very, very good. Yeah, my uh, 12th guy in the draft here, I got Johnny Davis from Wisconsin. Um, I am definitely not as high on Davis as most people are. Um, he lacks a three-point shot which is definitely something you don't want to see from uh, a shooting guard in the, um, in college. He's other than that, though, he's an amazing score. Um, 20 points per game in college. You want a big time player of the year. Um, he's got a, a lethal mid range game, um, lethal around the rim. I think if he develops a three point shot though, where, wherever he goes to, um, it doesn't have to be anything special. Just a shot up uh, three, then he'll be very good. Um, he could play point guard or shooting guard in the NBA, but it'll be primarily shooting guard. Um, he's a great defender too. So really the the big red flag on him, him is three-point shooting, um, which is why I have him around lower than some people do at the 12 spot. But I think if he figures this uh, three-point shot out in the pros, um, he'll be looked at as a top 10 player from this draft class. Yeah, um, I think Johnny Davis is, is a very good, um, very good prospect. He, he was kind of a high volume, low efficiency score last year. Um, he averaged, um, just like you can see, 
19 points last year, but I think it was kind of low efficiency and a lot of a lot of volume. He he got a lot of the shots last year. Um, and I think he needs to improve as a pl- a passer and a playmaker if he wants to play kind of that guard position in the NBA. Um, just like you said, he's not a very good shooter, but um, he he's a very versatile defender. He with his size and and athleticism, he can guard he can guard bigs as well, and he can guard wings. Um, I think he could play wing in the NBA. And he's also in a very good rebounder. He's one of the best rebounding um, guards in the draft, probably the best. Average eight rebounds a game as a shooting guard, which is which is very good. And he led his team in rebounding as a shooting guard. So I think all that together, um, if he can work on his shooting a little bit, he can be a very versatile NBA player. Yep. Um, 13th guy here in the draft, we got Mark Williams, who's a center from Duke. Uh, Mark Williams, too. I mean, it says here 6'10". Um, that's not correct whatsoever. He actually measured 7'2 at the NBA Combine, which is a lot taller without shoes as well, which is a lot taller, taller than people thought he would. Um, he's crazy athletic, too. This year, he, he shot 72% from the field as well. Um, doesn't really have that three-point shot, but that doesn't bother me a ton. You know, he's going to be your shot-blocking center, your lob threat. Um, he was excellent in March Madness, and I think deserves so much credit for that final four run that Duke had in uh, Coach K's final year. And Mark Williams is going to be a prototypical uh, NBA center, um, come in, rebound, block shots, stunt the ball. Um, I, I'm really high on Mark Williams, too, as a prospect. Um, I got him higher than, than some people do. But I think Mark Williams is going to be a stud in the NBA. Yeah, I like Mark Williams a lot. I think um, I think he's got his weaknesses, but I think his strengths kind of out, outweigh those. Um He's a very good gifted shot blocker. Um, he's got a good feel for when to go up and block shots. And obviously his 7'2", 7'7", wingspan, um, it helps that a lot too. So like you said, he was 72% from the field this year, which is very efficient. Um, and I think he's he's more of an old school big where he's, he's not going to shoot the ball very much. Um, but I think down low, close to the basket on defense and offense, he's very good. And his game, his game kind of fits the offensive – uh, offensive NBA today because of his ability to kind of go up, finish lobs on defense, affect affect shots, and be be that kind of rim presence on on any team he goes to. So I think a team drafting Mark Williams is getting that type of player, and I, I like him a lot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my 14th guy is a guy who I think is uh, kind of disrespected sometimes when you're talking about the mid draft, and that's Ty Ty Washington uh, from Kentucky. Um, Ty Ty was a top rated recruit, five star guy. Um, at Kentucky, he kind of learned that he he wasn't going to be that top guy in a team that was pretty stacked, and he took that role and he excelled in it. Um, he wasn't able to play point guard. Um, he had to play off ball a little more because they had Xavier Wheeler there already for Kentucky, who was that who was that ball handler. So he played off ball a lot, but I think he's going to be a good um, point guard in the NBA. But since he knows he knows how to play off ball and he showed that he could in Kentucky, teams are going to love that versatility. Um, he's an amazing passer. I think he's one of the best passing, um, guards in this draft. I don't think the stats really show, show it cause he's playing off ball at Kentucky, but, um, in the league, that's going to be his top trait. I think he's a, um, solid defender, not the greatest, but I think he's a solid defender. Um, great three level score. I don't see a ton of limitations in his game. And I really think, um, that he has a chance to even go late lottery or even just outside the lottery in, in draft night. Yeah, um, I, I like Ty Ty Washington a lot too. I think he's he gets overlooked. He got overlooked on that Kentucky team. And I think in this draft he does a little bit too. But I think in the right the right team takes him. I think they can develop him very well. Um, he's a versatile guard, and he showed he showed comfortability with the ball. Like he he's a good ball handler. Um, he he knows how to make plays. I think so. You said he played off ball a little bit, which I think that's why his assist numbers were down. But I think he's a good playmaker when he has the ball. Um, I think he needs to improve on his efficiency scoring a little bit. Um, he, he, he wasn't super efficient in college. Um, I, he kind of reminds me of a, a less athletic Cole Anthony coming out of college, um, with his scoring ability. Um, he's a good shooter. Um, he's a good, good, um, good mid range, stuff like that. He's good around the rim, but, um, yeah, I like him a lot. Moving on at pick 15, I got O'Shea Agbaji uh, for Kansas. Um, he won March Madness MVP, um, excellent shooter, excellent defender. He's your uh, prototypical old college vet. Um, he's going to be 23, I think, by the time the NBA season starts. 
So that's kind of the reason I have him a little down here. He doesn't have as much upside. Uh, you know what you're going to get from him. That's not a knock on his game at all. He's going to be a very good NBA player, and he's going to be very good for a long time. Um, I can see him excelling in a six-man role and even starting some games um, in the NBA. But I think that shooting and defense is going to take him very far in the NBA. Um, I really like Abaji's game um, for sure, and I think he's going to be a very, very good NBA player. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. I think he was – He's by far the best player in March Madness. Um, on that Kansas team, that was very good. He was the best player. And he is a senior, so um, he's got less, you could say, potential than some of these guys. But I think also the other way, um, he's more proven. And he, you know what you're getting from him. He's an elite scorer. And I think coming off the bench, or he can start on some teams, um, they're getting a very good very good scorer who's, who's NBA ready. And um, he's a very good athlete. Um, he can catch lobs. He's a very good shooter. Um, he's a pretty good defender, too. I don't see a lot of weaknesses in his game. Uh, I think the only knock on him is he's he's 22, which I think if he goes to a a, a better team that's not really in the in the rebuilding or developing stage right now, I think they can he can help a team win right away. So I like him a lot. Yep. Um, 16th is my sleeper, and that's Jalen Williams, shooting guard from Santa Clara. Um, Jalen Williams really is a more polished guy in this draft. Um. I kind of I, I saw a lot of him before the NBA Combine. Um, you know, you heard you heard uh, murmurs from social media that this is a guy to look out for at the NBA Combine. Um, and at the NBA Combine, he had a lot of sitouts during the scrimmages from these top guys who who didn't want to risk the injury. Jalen Williams took full advantage of that and balled out. He's by far the best player at the NBA Combine. Mm-hmm. Um, he was balling out all over the place. Great shooter, great defender. I mean, he can really do it all on the on the on the court. And I think NBA teams are really going to value his versatility to play the point guard or the shooting guard in the pros. I think he's going to be a very good role player in the NBA. And I think um, the rise for him is, is definitely something you need to take notice of. And I think he has a chance to go late lottery even in in the NBA draft. But Jalen Williams is for sure a guy I love, and I think it's being um, talked about for good reason. Yeah, um, I agree with you on Jalen Williams. He he balled out in the, in the combine game. Um, he averaged eight point, 18 points a game last year in college, which I think shows a lot to his scoring ability. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it quick here. I think a team that, that takes a risk on him is going to get a, a very good reward, so I like him a lot. Yeah, um, 17 here. I got to go a little quicker here. We talked about the top 16 guys, but uh, Tari Eason here from LSU, um, 6'8", 216, sophomore. He was only 20 years old, and he was very good. 17 points per game at LSU. Um, he was 52% from the field, and he shot around, I want to say, maybe just under 4%, or it might, it might be at 40% from three. Um, so he can kind of do it all, but his wonders really come on defense. Um, you know, if you see a 17-point-per-game score, you're saying, wow, so he's a good offensive play, player, but really it's defense where he thrives. Um, great shot blocker. You see him flying all over the place on defense, stealing the ball. So I think um, wherever team he goes to, he's going to make a great impact right away and um, maybe coming off the bench at first, but I think he can work himself to become a long-time NBA starter. Yeah, um, I like Tari Eason a lot. He's a very good three-point shooter. He improved a lot in the past two years. Um, I could see him being a very good 3 and D type player who can guard guard kind of one through five. He can guard bigs. He can guard, uh, guard guards. He's very athletic, so I think he's very good. Yeah, um, 18 here, uh, Nikola Jovic, you know, sounds similar to a, a guy we know, but uh, Jovic definitely is the complete opposite game that Jokic has. Um, he's really young. He's really raw. Um, he's an excellent shooter. He's one of the top shooters in this draft, um, which I like a lot. You know, he's not the best defender. Um, he's a pretty poor defender, but I think his offensive game is really, really good. Um, I think if he's a guy you can develop, he goes to a team where, they're not going to rush him to play right away. Um, or you can kind of sit back and learn from some of the vets. I think if the payoff for him will be huge, and I'm excited to see um, what team he goes to. Yeah, I think uh, you know, which is a very good offensive player. I just think the knock on him is defense. Um, is he quick enough, big enough, strong enough to guard to guard bigs in the NBA? Um, I think I think we'll we'll see. We'll find out. Just like you said, you won't have to play right away and guard these big guys right away, but. Um, I think if a team develops him and kind of gets some stronger, quicker stuff like that, I think he'll be very good in the NBA. Yep. Uh, pick that team. I got Malachi Branham from Ohio State. Um, Branham's been like 
during the college basketball season, he's flown up draft boards. Um, he's coming to Ohio State. Ohio State system doesn't have a ton of one-on-dons, you know. He was going there, and the plan was he was going to declare in 2023 or 2024. But nope, he took the starting role right away for Ohio State, and he really played amazing down the stretch. And this uh, March Madness for Ohio State in the two games they were in it, he played amazing in the Big Ten tournament. Um, he played amazing even in the losses against Michigan. Um, I'm a big Michigan fan, so just watching him in that game, he was lights out shooting the ball, which I think is a big trait for him. But he's also all over the place on defense and dra- taking the ball to the rim. So he's a three-level scorer. Um, I'm, I have him a little low, as some people might do, because I think he might strictly just be a three-point shooter in the NBA, which is a knock on him at all. Um, it's just I think guys can offer a little more than him, which I have him lower. But I think because of that shooting and potential, um, he's going to be a good NBA player. So I just got him at 19. Yeah, I, I like Malachi a lot. I think, just like you said, he's a very good three-point shooter. And he, he improved as a defender throughout this year. So I think if he can keep improving on that and keep improving his defense, he'll be very good because his offensive game is already there. So, Yeah, I got – going to the final stretch here, my last 10 kind of prospects is Usman Dieng um, from, from New Zealand. Um, I'm not as high on him as most people are. You know, people look at him as a lottery guy, but I don't really think he does anything particu- particularly elite. Um, I think he's kind of above average at a lot of things. I don't know if he's going to be this elite guy that people are projecting him to be. I definitely think he's going to be a solid scorer in the NBA. Um, he's really lengthy, which really helps when he's taking the ball to the um, to the hole. But he's going to be an extremely raw NBA player. You're going to have to develop him. So that's why I have him a little lower than most people do. But don't get me wrong. I think that length um, is something that you need to take notice of. And uh, the sky's the limit for this kid. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it quick here for these last couple, but um, I think the one thing he could work on is kind of his uh, his frame. Um, I think if his his athleticism doesn't kind of bloom, I think he could be it could be a problem for whatever team drafts him. But offensively, I think he's very good and very talented. Yeah, uh, pick twenty one here. I got Kennedy Chandler, point guard from Tennessee. Um, I like Chandler a ton. He was that top dog on a on a Tennessee team that won the SEC championship, which you don't see a freshman being the best player on on, on a team like that but he was um you know he takes control of his team he's a team leader um he's an elite slashing point guard um probably can improve shooting just a touch um but he's a great defender he's very quick very fast um that 170 weight though kind of scares me a little bit um but other than that i think he might start off as a backup point guard for maybe a playoff team but i think he can totally work his way into a start of the year after kind of similar to tyrese maxi so i'm very high on kennedy chandler yeah, um, I think he's got a lot of upside as well. Um, the one thing that kind of scares me is that is that height. Um, definitely not the shortest player we've seen, but I think um, it still helps to be to be taller in today's NBA NBA game. Um, but with that aside, he's he proved himself a lot at Tennessee, so um, I think he he'll continue to just prove himself in the NBA and and uh, prove people wrong. So I like him a lot. Yep. Uh, pick twenty two here. I got Jaden Hardy from the G League. Um, Hardy was kind of these guy, a guy that was going to be a top five player in the draft going into the draft. Um, but he really struggled efficiency wise, the G league, um, forcing way too many shots. Um, I think he kind of needs to learn that he's not going to be that guy, that main guy in the NBA, which he kind of struggled to, to learn early on playing with some of the studs on this ignite team. Um, so I think if he goes to a playoff team, a team that's going to contend, I, th- um, I think he's going to learn quickly. You know, you're not going to be that top guy right away. He's going to learn to know what he's good at and maximize that in the NBA. So I think if he learns that, then he'll be really good. I have a, I'm, I have a lot of hope for Jane Hardy, um, and I really like love his upside. And I think if a team nails, nails this pick, um, they're getting a hell of a, hell of a prospect. Yeah, um, he, he's definitely a bucket for sure. Um, you can score all three levels. Uh, just like you said, though, kind of needs to work on that efficiency a little bit. Uh, maybe his shot, his shot choice a little bit better. Um, I think he can, he can play, he can play point guard as well. He's a good ball handler. Um, he's, he's a decent playmaker. Um, he's got all the tools, but I think he just, just like you said, he needs to, I think if he goes to a good team, he needs to kind of know his role and, and just be a, be an efficient shooter. Um, maybe work on that defense a little bit, but he's got all the tools to be a great NBA player. So yeah, I like him. Yeah. Um, kind of, kind of going a little longer here on um, that I anticipated. So I'm just going to, 
quickly show kind of my last couple of prospects. Aiden, you pick out who you like a lot out of these guys. Um, I got Marshawn Bocamp here from G League and Knight. Um, really good defender. Um, kind of needs to improve on three-point shot, though. Next up, I got EJ Liddell from Ohio State. Um, excellent shooter, excellent scorer. Um, kind of an undersized for position, though, which I think is a big knock on him, and he definitely needs to improve that defense. 25, I got Blake Wesley, shooting guard from Notre Dame. Uh, was kind of down on him at first. Wasn't the biggest fan of him. But the more I watched him, the more I kind of fell in love with his game, his style of game. Um, he plays really bigger than he, his height. And I think he's to be really good um, upside for whatever team drafts him. Uh, next up, I got Dalen Terry from Arizona. Um, stats don't show the whole, full story for him. He was making plays all over the court for Arizona um, down the stretch last year. He's a taller um, guard. He's making plays all over the place. So I think he'll improve um, whoever he's playing with. Uh, 27, I got Ismail Kamagate. Um, I'm a lot higher than him as other people, as you can see. His on ESPN has a 42 and fans both 38. I have a 27. One defensive player of the year in the Paris League. Um, and so a guy like that who's only 18 or 19 years old. Um, so I'm definitely baking on his ups, uh, defensive upside. 28, I got Bryce McGallans. He's a former five star recruit. Uh, went to Nebraska. Excellent score. Definitely needs to improve that efficiency as he was kind of that main option on that Nebraska team. But I really like his upside a ton. Uh, 29, I got Trevor Heels here from Duke. Excellent defender. Reminds me a ton of Marcus Smart. Um, I mm -hmm. kind of see see their games identical kind of. So I think he's to be a, a sleeper pick. And lastly, I got Christian Brown uh, from Kansas. Excellent shooter. Excellent defensive guy. Um, really kind of played a big role in that Kansas team. Yeah, um, I like Christian Brown a lot, but I think out of those guys, I'll mention EJ Liddell here. Um, he's six seven, which I think he's he could be a little undersized with his height, but his weight I think makes up for it and his physicality and his play style stuff like that. Um, he, he needs to improve on his three point a little bit, but I think it's it's okay or it's it's pretty good for his uh, for his position and his size. And he could be a matchup nightmare for for some for some bigs in the NBA. I think if he He's athletic and he, he's pretty quick for his size and, and, and weight. So I think um, I think if he he's guarded by some of these bigger guys in the NBA, it could be a matchup matchup nightmare for some teams. So I like him a lot. Yeah, um, you know that kind of wraps up our uh, our lunch table sports big board. I'm super excited the the draft is finally here. We pumping out a lot of draft content these couple of days. Um, final mock draft. I have another video sprinkled in there. But just make sure to like and subscribe on this video. You know, it really helps us a ton. Um, we're trying to we're trying to reach 100 subscribers by the end of the summer. Um, that'd be a big goal for us, big milestone. So if you like what you see, just make sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Let us know if we're leaving anything else off. Yeah, I'm um, excited for NBA draft night. I'll keep it at that. Yeah. All right. See you guys in the next episode.